Hi there, thanks uh, for coming, joining us this afternoon. Uh, maybe it's evening where you are, or morning, who knows. Anyway, um, what we're going to look at today uh, uh, is... Uh, um, I realise I'm at the sorry I'm at the the end of my uh, my presentation there. Let me just uh, rewind. Uh, is to look at um, planning uh, and in kind of two modes. Uh, the the main idea is kind of thinking about uh, planning and courses uh, and how that might clash with uh, the way your your school or institution organises things. Uh, and then within that, thinking about how we might uh, plan uh, uh, lessons, uh, bearing those in mind. So just to begin with, um, I'd like you just to think about, uh, first, you, you could answer in the question box, if you like, uh, how much freedom you have to plan uh, your own courses. Uh, so rather than not talking about a lesson, but a series of lessons over a period of time. is the course that you do? Is it based on a course book? Can you choose that course book? Do you have to follow the course book as it's written? Uh, you know, can you choose units from the course book? So just to give me an idea where you're at uh, in terms of your course planning. So have a look in the question box, uh, post your little comments there, give you a, a moment or two. Any comments there from Rich, Richard? Nothing, nothing yet. I think people may be thinking still and typing, perhaps. Yeah. No, I think there's uh, there's nothing about in so far. Yeah. Okay. Well, it's something to think about. I mean, I think in a lot of cases, what uh, happens is uh, a course book can be imposed. Uh, you know, lucky if it's roadmap, obviously. Uh, and uh, but you know, it may not actually quite fit with your uh, your timetable. And then that leads to this kind of question, this pressure to complete the course book. So perhaps you might also consider that. You know, who who feels that pressure to complete a course book? Who feels the pressure to maybe within that? The, the the timetable they're given to complete a lesson and maybe you might feel guilty about that I certainly remember my times when I was at um, uh, a, a training teacher particularly in early days where I'd feel kind of you know that I would have put in a lot of effort into making a that what I saw as the perfect plan and then it didn't quite come to fruition or I didn't have time to finish it and it felt like a bit of a loss why is that you know why why should we feel that way um, I think what we need to ask in that question is exactly what we mean by completing a course book or completing a lesson what, what, what is your feeling about that so again perhaps if you could just comment again in the um, the, uh, the question box, sorry to put you on uh, on the spot here. Um, for you, what does completing a course book mean? And you know, if you feel guilty about not completing it, why would that be? Any comments there? Um, yes, um, Andrew. No. Nope. We have our, our quiet crowd today. Don't feel shy. Um, we have one suggestion, which is to complete at least 70% of a book. Okay. All right. Um, uh, another session is acquiring certain skills necessary for the further stages of learning. Okay, interesting. That, that one's uh, something we'll definitely be coming back to. Um, covering the units, vocabulary and reading. Mm -hmm. 
And then one is about the guilty part, which is I feel guilty because students spend money on the books. Yeah. So um, th this was something which mentioned, uh, just taking that point there, this was something that was mentioned at uh, this morning as well. And I, I do understand it, especially, you know, where uh, you're in a situation perhaps that uh, students don't have that much money, they're committing a lot to the to the course. My, my own personal feeling about these things, this, this issue, is as an institution, I, I always prefer that the course book is included in the course fees. You basically have a slightly higher course fee, but it, you know the students get the book, and then there's no obligation uh, for for the the teachers to feel that they must get through it in that way. More importantly, though, I think is is just kind of considering um, how the course book, perhaps uh, where we're not doing all the material, how we may make exploit it and use it beyond the, the actual classroom. I mean, part of the reason for having a course book is that students can look forward and backwards from um, uh, what they're, they're going to, to their, their classes, so what they are potentially going to learn and what they have learned and you know we could encourage the students to do that and make use of the the, the course course book um, uh, and some of the material in it um, beyond the class that we do okay uh, these are my my thoughts about the completing of the course book um, and you know some of them were mentioned here so you know it's maybe not doing all the material but uh, was mentioned there 70 percent the question is exactly, you know, what what that really means uh, in terms of completion. And similarly, uh, when we talk about covering the grammar or the vocabulary, um, I think obviously uh, as authors, we're trying to make good choices uh, for your students to learn. We think about the, the level that they're at. We make use of the... Um, uh, global scale of English to to kind of calibrate that to some degree but obviously uh, other vocabulary for example and perhaps other grammar comes up through students interactions and obviously as good teachers we want to be teaching that as well so does that mean that we are you know how does that fit in with our concept of completion you know is that of equal or less value to what's in the course book. One, my personal feeling is it's at least of equal value and some cases greater value because that's what the the students are, are wanting to say themselves. So in the end, the, the time that we fit we have is the time that we have. And that is and the things that we teach within that time are the things that we teach. So in a way, I think we want to try to move a little bit away from that kind of idea of, of completing. Having said that, um, we might consider this last one of covering skills, I'll come back to this later, as a way of um, perhaps getting away from the idea of the specific material and uh, and language, I'll come back to that. But having said all that, what if we do want to kind of go through it and how does it fit into our our classroom timetable? So the first point about uh, roadmap is in fact, you have kind of two, two ways of completing the course uh, in the way that it's designed. So on the, the left here in the yellow um, uh, units, these are the kind of main units which are based around a, um, a, a speaking goal uh, and they're based on these kind of can-do statements uh, familiar with us from the CFR and which has been developed further through the GSE. So you can just focus on those uh, and then you have an extended route which is these kind of skills lessons which you see on the right which are at the back of the book and offer a kind of extension to one or other of the units in the front of the book so these two are linked so uh, the, the, the 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 lesson at the back of the book will be linked by theme to one of the lessons in the front so 
as a starting point, although we may be moving away from this idea of completing particular the whole book and the hours, okay, as a starting point, we do maybe need to think about how much material is there and how much it will cover. So estimating time frames is is um, is always difficult. People often ask how long is the the material, and obviously the way I teach may be different to the way you teach. I might take longer, you might take less, or vice versa. So, you know, we need to think about these as estimates. But when we're writing, we have in mind that each of these four main lessons will be 90 minutes. Okay, I should say this last one is split between two 45 minutes lessons. So it's a kind of functional type of lesson and then a check and reflect. The additional skills lessons are based around the idea of 60 minutes work. So then what you've got is kind of 60 hours core uh, work plus 30 hours uh, uh, extension. And you might want to consider, I know a lot of people have shorter courses, maybe they're only doing one lesson a week, or uh, or it's on a kind of short term summer school, perhaps something like that. Maybe even a, a you know CELTA type of courses. You might consider it as a heart of doing half levels. So we we would then have you know essentially between 30 and 45 hours. The, that's the kind of basis that we're writing. The reality is, of course, that there are lots of other things which happen in the classroom that are not course book and they take time and they these are the one of the things which kind of interrupt uh, our kind of best laid plans and require us to maybe rethink uh, what we're doing so just again um, if you if you don't mind some suggestions of those things that may take time beyond the course book. Again, just uh, have a look in your the, the question box for, for comments there. Um, testing. Testing, yeah. Let's be gone. Independent projects. Okay. Projects. Interesting. Mm. Yeah, like I like this idea. Um, checking homework. Mm. Yes, I think we'll find that that is something I haven't mentioned in my uh, my list. Games. Okay. Games. Yep. Yeah. Okay. The the this is what I've come up with some of them mentioned but as i said i, I forgot uh, homework which is an interesting one um i mean the first thing is is if we're thinking over a you know a course obviously the first you know lesson quite easily might just be a kind of getting to know you type of thing where we don't use the the course material at all or we only use a maybe just introduce them to the idea of the book and similarly at the end of the course we might have a party, certificate giving, kind of that winding down, watching a film, those kinds of things. Um, sadly, people arrive late. We have to re-explain things. Sometimes people have to go early, including the teacher. There's breaks, sometimes also having a problem of extending on occasion. Um, there's sort of registers and admin. Um, there's chat. Uh, so, I mean, I don't know about you, but I really would kind of start the lesson by just going straight into that, uh, right, look, open the books, page six. Uh, you know, there will often be a chat about what you did at the weekend, how are you, those kinds of things, which often then develop actually into opportunities uh, for teaching. There's a kind of dealing with the confusion or enthusiasm of students. So, I mean, you know, 
sometimes, uh, although obviously uh, perhaps not uh, your teachers on this particular webinar, but uh, for some teachers there may be that uh, a false explanation or the students aren't quite clear what's been uh, been said so there has to be repetition we will give extra examples sometimes the enthusiasm hopefully lots of times the enthusiasm of students for the material and for the speaking might take us on to talk about uh, you know longer than we expected and that might then also lead to unexpected teaching and learning opportunities that we want to exploit. And then we mentioned the tests, there's also revision tasks, holidays, cancel fun activities, rewards, the games which were mentioned, the tutorials and course feedback. And you know, within that, the, the, the very interesting idea of having your own kind of projects, which maybe you want to be uh, running parallel to your course. All of these things have an impact. And so whenever we, you know, the temptation is to take, okay, we've got 90 hours and then just chop it up uh, as we want for our, our, to fit our lessons as they are. Whereas in fact, we need to take account of those things. So, you know, uh, one of the things is with project management, it's very often that people underestimate time because they don't, think about these realistic aspects so we need to be overestimating so perhaps instead of thinking about it uh, each lesson being 90 minutes although that you know technically the material probably can be done in that time we should really be thinking of it as two hours for each uh, lesson and then perhaps you know the extra uh, the optional ones is 90 minutes and then also trying to think about building in you know at least one extra lesson per unit um, which can accommodate um, for example the tutorials perhaps catching up or uh, with something that we missed because we went off on tangent um, you know these are doing a test etc cetera, etc cetera, so that we can build in some flexibility within that so then you'd be looking at you know uh, you know maybe 100 hours 145 if you do the extended version and those half levels would be about 70 hours you know obviously we can have shorter shorter versions as well within that then you might then consider about the the main lessons themselves obviously not everybody has a two hour class. Sometimes they might only have a one hour class or 45 minutes. So then perhaps what you could think about is, is the divide. I mean, the lessons, the main lessons can be divided quite easily because there's uh, usually a short reading or listening which goes with some kind of um, language input. And then there's a final speaking task which always is preceded by some kind of language input so it's quite easy to split those you can see it here for example i mean in this case it does actually fit like one page one page it doesn't always uh, as we'll see in a moment uh, but you can see here we've got the vocabulary input followed by reading there's discussions around that so we could have that as one lesson and then you've got you can follow that up with the grammar lesson plus the the speaking task um, in the next lesson uh, and the speaking tasks although they kind of refer back to um, this language actually often have um, uh, models which you can exploit and you know can uh, uh, develop um, uh, in order to do those without having necessarily uh, taught uh, the language so we we overestimate the time but then also we need to think that we shouldn't be scheduling too far ahead um there, there's two i don't know if anybody's familiar with blackadder it's uh, it was a british series uh, kind of historical comedy and there was always a character in here called Baldrick who's uh, who had various cunning plans uh, and they were always rather convoluted 
you know, and uh, and complicated, and inevitably they went wrong. So in, in a in a in a way, uh, we need to be prepared for that ourselves. Um, even with our estimating, overestimating, there will be things which come up. And so what we want to do is maybe only schedule for one or two units. What that and then within that, perhaps also say to the teachers, if you're in that position, or to yourself, if 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 you're just planning for yourself, well, my deadline is ideally I'll finish these two units within this time frame. But if I do one extra lesson, that's fine. If I do one less lesson, that's fine. And then we take that as a kind of guide uh, and within that the the time that we're doing uh those lessons we're also getting feedback from the students uh if you're a dos getting feedback from the teachers to see how we can adjust the next period of time and you know uh, change if we need to and on occasion i mean again obviously don't believe you will want to change radically from the material that you see in roadmap but there may be things which come up uh, perhaps the students from using the material want more of the skills practice for example and you need to pivot uh, away from your your previous ideas to accommodate that this idea of uh, of uh, pivoting is it actually comes from um, a business model called uh, the lean lean development or lean approach uh, and it's the idea that you have a kind of minimal product and you get it out there you have a go with it you you, you practice it you you see what happens and through kind of constant repeated feedback you adjust and on occasions have to kind of not entirely abandon but make quite radical changes to uh, to our future uh, product or the way it's going to be used and we need to do something similar in our planning for the course we need to give these kind of times for feedback we need to give the students opportunities to say how they're feeling and we need to respond to that okay so this is a kind of way of thinking about it as a whole course and how we with the concept at least of trying to make cover the whole of our uh, course book uh, within that though i understand that teachers perhaps sometimes still have these uh, you know particular time phrase imposed on them they need to adjust with a view to that so they might be asked to cover one lesson in one hour or two hours whatever it is um or one unit in the you know four hours uh, and we have to make kind of i or they need or the opposite they might have to add stuff so we need to kind of think about how we as teachers can also plan with a view to adjusting to to those 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 needs the same principles as planning a course of course ideally are are in place so we need to be thinking about how we can build in some kind of flexibility to those lessons thinking about what can be dropped easily so uh, you know think that means thinking about our priorities within the lesson um, thinking about you know are there opportunities to take the class in a different direction if the students are interested will they want to do more of something and being being ready for that if you like incorporating moments to get feedback from students within the lesson so that you can do that so that you can adjust and and if necessarily do something um, perhaps you know quite different to what you planned within the lesson or certainly for the next lesson okay so um what I'm going to do is look at uh, some ideas based on this particular lesson um, uh, from uh, Roadmap B1 Plus. Again, just to, to point out, you've got the reading this time followed by a grammar. It finishes here. OK, but, you know, this is something you could do in like an hour and then the second part you might do in another hour. 
possibly with needing to think about some additions possibly not okay and that's what we're going to look at now so the first thing is to think about how we can think about how we can extend the material in the first instance uh, in ways which we can be flexible about so that we could kind of drop it or, or not uh, as the case may be so uh, before we get on to that again if you could just for a moment pause think about what we're at so far uh, and answer in the uh, question box uh, if you have how much freedom you have to plan individual lessons and if you don't have to do all the exercises in the book what priority would you give to the following okay and just consider the order that you might put them in okay I'll give you a moment then to think about that Give me a chance for a little coffee to keep me going. I don't have to do all the exercises. Mm -hmm. Any other comments there? That's um, listening, reading, grammar, vocabulary, writing, then speaking. Okay. Interesting. And then priority vocabulary and listening. Mm -hmm. um, another one says vocabulary, reading, listening, and grammar. Okay. Great. Okay. Well, I think we can. We can. Uh, uh, some of the things I'll be saying next might uh, might accommodate. Uh, some of those priorities uh, I mean essentially this is what we need to think about I mean really we need to ask our students obviously what is their priority as well um, you might still have some you know we have our professional judgments to make about it as well uh, from and and this is the kind of way we might be thinking about adjusting over time because we see as the students use the material, you know, where their weaknesses or strengths are. Um, so first, what I want to do is to kind of just consider some kind of extensions to this core. Um, uh, I'm going to kind of skip this one uh, quite quickly, but it it's a way of thinking about how we might add to a lesson so that, uh, you know, in doing our lesson over two hours we might have half an hour each one that we can you know feel freer to explore and expand on obviously some of the things we talked about before the testing the chats etc will uh, be be some of that extra uh, and then there's possible other things such as memorization tasks uh, maybe um, additional productive practice uh, of the language in the book. The memorization task, for example, is maybe after you've done your kind of vocabulary uh, task, they're not in the book, um, but sometimes I just ask the students to try and remember as much of the language in the, the little exercise as they can at that moment and then get them to test each other in some way. I like doing them because I think that also offers a little model for how they might do memorization outside the class and kind of encourage them to talk about how they go about it. Um, more importantly, the kind of things I do is to be thinking about how I will work the language and use student talk. So um, what I uh, would be looking at is I would go through the, the material, I would look at all the 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 speaking tasks that would be the warmers the response to readings the the response to uh, practice 
of vocabulary or grammar, the final uh, speaking task, all of these together. And I sometimes I literally record how I'd answer those questions. Sometimes I'm just thinking in my head, I predict what the students might say. And I often will then write down whole sentences, whole kind of sometimes little texts um, of those kinds of things they might say and just try and notice new language and patterns that are are there in those answers. So these are things which I might pick up in class. That new language, some of it, I would hope, actually will be in the material itself later or before. Some of it will be, you know, perhaps things which I know my students might not know or, you know, might be just useful extras. And the other thing I might do is, uh, there's a little admission I have to make here, which is, when we're writing, uh, at the end of the process, when it goes into design, there's often a kind of uh, fateful email which is sent through and you're told that you have over matter. And over matter means that you basically have too much text on the page and it has to be cut back in some way. Unfortunately, quite often, the thing which will is e most easily cut and which will be cut will be one of these speaking uh, question. So whereas before you might have had four questions, now you might only have two. Often those will be then suggested in the teacher's book, these extra questions, but perhaps, you know, they, they, they might get lost. Uh, and so that's the other area which I might look to add, is just writing a couple of extra questions which I might be able to just write on the board quickly and give to students. And from that, I would also be doing what I've just done before, which is thinking about the answers, thinking about what language comes up. So if we take from that lesson 2C that we saw, these are the kind of, uh, the, the various questions over the course of the lesson. And just taking the first one, I would be thinking of the kinds of things I might say. So I might say, well, yeah, definitely, you know, I think uh, I used to play out a, outside a lot more in the street because there were fewer cars. Uh, my son th these days, you know, you know, he's spent a lot of time stuck in front of his computer playing video games. Uh, you know, I don't think he should... He, he got out enough, maybe I should have been uh, stricter, I don't know. Um, so, you know, maybe they're not as fit as they used to be, these kinds of things. So, some of that language I would then be noticing, like being stuck in front of a computer, uh, you know, uh, I used to play outside a lot more. So, used to is actually the grammar that we'll be looking at, so it's an opportunity to kind of almost pre pre-teach that or highlight it for the students. Stuck in front of a computer is actually something new and it's not in the, the material, but it might be something which I might want to throw in as an extra if I feel that my students can cope with it. In terms of extra, I mean, there's actually a lot of um, uh, questions here, it's probably enough, but if I was thinking about extra questions, I might have something like this. Do you, you know, I might start off the lesson, do you know anyone with children, what are they like? Would you like children? Why, why not? This last question is an interesting one because it's kind of, you know, potentially it could be a bit awkward for some people. And that is one reason why those kinds of questions might not be in the material because we don't know your students, but you do. And so that is an opportunity for, for maybe taking, um, you know, the, 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 the conversation in a little extra. Very quick to prepare add or not and this is where we're thinking about is the flexibility of adding or, or or not doing if we if we want to the uh, the next area is to think about extensions to the core in terms of working the language and this is the the way i would prepare is particularly with the vocabulary so i know uh, a couple of you mentioned that vocabulary was a you know a priority for you and your students so one area i would be looking at is thinking about questions about that new vocabulary which will check it but also generate new language again i would think about the answers 
and I might think about potential extensions from that language and perhaps again writing a couple of potential practice questions which I will use if students are enthusiastic about it and if they're interested to extend that further okay so if we take again this is a key key uh, vocabulary from lesson two uh, there's a bit more than this but uh, here's some examples um, I would ask some questions about this which would as I say generate other language so for example watch over kids this I would be doing at the end of they've done their task I've checked as I'm checking the answers basically so they've got the right answer they know the basic meaning but I then might ask well why might someone watch over kids okay answers would be things like they're worried about them maybe they're a bit overprotective um you know um there's a i don't know that kind of thing um what's the opposite of watch over kids well that's an interesting one because it could be a couple of different things you know uh, give them freedom let them do what they want um you know why might you uh, watch over kids so they stay uh, don't get into trouble and the point about both these questions, what you'll notice is they actually kind of recycle and regenerate some of the language, like let your kids play, get into trouble, actually potentially comes out from asking these questions, plus some new new language. Similarly, good manners, what examples of good manners are there? Actually, perhaps possibly easier to answer, what example of bad manners? You know, you again, we could imagine the kind of answers that the students might come up with. What else do parents often not let their kids do? What examples of authority can you think of? What's the opposite of respect authority? So again, always these opposites thinking about the, the, the collocation, the opposite, um, you know, uh, how much uh, might you uh, uh, how might you uh, disrespect authority? What ways? Okay, and these will generate kind of things. You could think of similar questions to ask about the other words here. We don't have time to do it today, but uh, um, uh, I hope you, uh, you you'll be able to see that they're 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 useful. Okay. Um, Obviously, there are uh, possibilities to extend the core with material as well. So this is, you can see this with the vocabulary bank at the back uh, of the book. There's also a grammar reference with exercises. And there's lots of these other things uh, uh, available. Some of them are, are more home study, but you've got workbook will have uh, material you can make use of in class, teacher's book with photocopyables and other ideas. You know, you can make use of these uh, as ways to uh, to develop the core. And another thing that I particularly like as an addition would be uh, on-the-spot revision. So um, these are tasks which I do regularly, but they don't require any preparation and can be added or dropped as necessary so uh, for example um, you get the students simply to repeat a speaking task that they did in a previous lesson perhaps with a new partner i might ask the students at the end of the class to close their books you can get them on a sheet of paper to write the kind of activities or the the topics which we discussed or read about or listened to then they compare in pairs and try and list the new language that they saw that came out of that comparing pairs comparing pairs they can add to that and then finally check against the the, the course book and their notepads so what you're doing here is um you know apparently we forget 50 percent of what we've learned within an hour or in other words by the end of the lesson you've forgotten half of what you've actually studied so this is a way of that first initial revision um, another favorite is a kind of three words or phrases so you give them a basically a task 
to choose three words or phrases. For, for example, three words or phrases that they have used um, in the last few days, or three words or phrases that they've forgotten the meaning of, or three words or phrases that they would never use. They write those down, they think about them. You can choose five if you want. Students then mingle and they explain when they use them or they ask for help to explain the words they've forgotten the meaning of or they explain why they would never use them, etc. So there's a kind of conversational uh, aspect to it. What I've, I've come to realise is that actually one way of, of uh, kind of keeping on track and making sure that I've covered my core and the student's core material is to actually rather than do these revisions at the beginning of the class as I used to is actually to consider doing it at the end uh, so you know that basically these revision tasks while they're important they can also be done at home so you know what we're doing is we're making sure we cover what we need to and then at the end of the le lesson I mean I usually aim to have like 20 minutes at the end free for recycling and re revising that kind of information but it comes at the end so it's it's more easily dropped sometimes what happens is you do the revision it goes on longer than you expect similar like you know checking your homework and then you don't get on to uh to doing the the core new stuff that you, you and your students want to do okay uh a shorter lesson uh, in the typical way of these things uh, you know my time is uh, uh, my time is 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 too long as well uh, I, I I've planned too much but here we go uh, one way we might think about it is is to focus on the language rather than the skills exercises uh, this is not my preference I should say uh, but we might avoid the warmers and the intros and we simply just go straight into, right, we're going to learn some words to do with um, uh, growing up, childhood. Uh, we don't need to worry about the context, we just tell them that it's it, we give them the task and we get on and do it. There is, uh, I mean, this is, as I say, it's not my preference, but there is a kind of um, this idea that memory is better at the beginnings and ends of lists. So in that respect, there is a kind of, you know, uh, support for doing your language work straight away at the beginning of the lesson. OK, and similarly doing your revision at the end, perhaps. Uh, so, uh, you know, in this case, we might just start straight on to the grammar. The, the grammar exercise here, again, I know the context is often seen as important, but perhaps it's not so important, um, you know, all the time. They're going to get practice in the end. And the tasks uh, within these kind of reference boxes, there are little tasks just to for the students to make choices. So they're, they're, they're not just reading these these exercises is kind of saying, right, we're going to look at used to, would, past simple, why they're used, have a go, at, read the thing, have a go at the task, see what you think, and then we move quickly on to the, to the practice. The other way to think about it is to go the other way, and this would be my kind of preference these days, is to think about covering the book in terms of covering the skills and the core can do's. So you can you can find out these. They are actually listed in the the book, but they're all taken from um, the the global scale of English. There's a toolkit which you can access online. Basically, you go in and you you click on the learning objectives. You choose your level, and what you will be given is a list of learning objectives, a bit like this. OK, this would be the, the, the search results. There's actually will be several pages of this. Um, so what you could do is you could actually give this list from the book, uh, from the as listed in the book or uh, as you find on online. We could ask our students which is their priorities and then choose the units and the material within uh, um, the, the each lesson that covers these skills 
what you will notice is a lot of these skills can be covered at lots of different times. So although, okay, the first one there is a kind of lesson-based one, can speak in general terms about environmental problems, we're not going to do that in every class. The second one, the third one, can signal they wish to bring a conversation to an end, can actually be covered pretty much in any lesson by responding to students, by encouraging them to try and bring their task to an end appropriately and then feeding in some language. The material we give, there is material in the book which helps you with these things and you can find that out and prioritise that, but there is also opportunity for you to cover that uh, yourself. And in that situation, what you might do instead of, uh, of prioritising the the language is basically you kind of flip it. So you might tell the students to do the language exercises at home. And essentially what you do is simply do the tasks. You'd start with the tasks, including perhaps the, the final speaking task. So what you're doing is you're ensuring you're covering the, the skills that they need to focus on. And actually what you will find is if, I think what happens when you, are led by outcomes and these kind of broader skills, the grammar and vocab that the students need to cover at this level will naturally come out of those tasks and we can teach it initially simply in response to what the students are saying. But also obviously we could go back and, and look at uh, the exercises as it is in the book. Does it matter if the students don't do their homework? If they don't do that vo uh, grammar or vocabulary exercise? Well, in a way it doesn't because the students will manage the task as best they can. And this is something I mentioned in my previous webinar on individualized learning. The, the tasks are kind of individualizing for the, each student because they do it as best as they, they can. So in this way, we might, rather than doing the, we'd set this grammar and vocabulary task for homework, we might start with the speaking, or we might do, um, you know, you could do the reading, perhaps, and the speaking goes with it, which will set the tone to then do the speaking. As I say, we've got a model here also quite often, which allows the, the, the framework to be set and allows you to set up that speaking task, even though the students may not have actually done uh, the, the language input at that time. Okay, and through that, we can obviously get through the material um, substantially quicker, and you can make choices perhaps uh, about how you would organize a shorter course uh, as well. Uh, that's it. Uh, apologies for going slightly over time uh, and uh, thank you for sticking with me.